Okay, so today I'm going to explain proof by contraposition. Um, proof by contraposition, it falls into a more general category known as an indirect proof. Um, and these are of vital importance to anyone who's trying to do mathematical proofs because oftentimes you'll find that uh, if you have a statement such as P implies Q and you attack it with the typical method of a direct proof of assuming that your hypothesis is true and then using um, rules of inference, uh, mathematical theorems, and things of that nature to work your way over to Q and show that Q has to be true. There are circumstances, and, and you'll see a couple of them as I go through this, uh, that prevent you from really getting to Q. Um, they basically, well, basically what happens is just you can be led to some trivial result, something that doesn't further you towards the objective in any way, or you can end up really just making the problem a lot more complicated and difficult on yourself. So in either situation, the first being you can't prove it without this, this kind of method, and the second being you save yourself a boatload of work, both of them are great. Okay, so let's try to attack this problem using a direct proof. Um, so if n squared is even, so what we're going to do is obviously we're going to assume that this is true. Um, and we're going to try to show ourselves that, it impl it, that if n squared is even, then that means that it's necessary for n to be even. So if n squared is even, we can write n squared as 2 times k for some integer k. Uh, as every even number as a factor of 2. So we know that n equals 2k for some integer k. Uh, I'm sorry, n squared yeah, is equal to 2k for some integer k. Um, so by taking the square root of both sides, we can try to isolate n to try to prove our conclusion here. Um, by doing that, we can say that n that this, uh, that if n squared is even, that implies that n is equal to the square root of 2k, um, which doesn't really help us very much. We're trying to make this, uh, this part here look in the form of uh, 2 times an integer. But we can note that this is, in fact, because the square root of 2 is equal to 2 over the square root of 2, we can rewrite n as 2 times the square root of k over 2. Um, and this is pretty much as far as we can get. Uh, we can get a 2 factored out, um, but now look where we are. What do we have to do? Well, now we're going to have to uh, go ahead and we're going to have to like do the following. We're going to have to prove that the square root of k over 2 is an integer. And I don't know about you, but I don't really want to go about trying to prove that, considering that k is, an, is a value that we created. It's an arbitrary value. So I'm not really sure where to even start with this. So what, what do we do in this situation? Well, we could use proof by contraposition. Um, we take advantage of, the, of this logical equivalency here, that p implies q is uh, logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Um, and just to make this concrete, we came up with a real short example. Um, we're let, let P be, uh, this is my shirt, and let Q be, the shirt is blue. Then P implies Q obviously means if this is my shirt, then it is blue. And to a little side note, obviously if you uh, are wearing a maize and blue shirt, you're going to look awesome you know, the girls are going to love you. It's just a, uh, a little aside there. Um, but so to take the contraposition, what do we do, right? We flip the... Uh, let's do it this way. I'll circle it in red to show that we're going to negate it. So we're going to negate the hypothesis and put it in as the conclusion. And we're going to negate the conclusion and put it in as the hypothesis. So in this case we would negate if it is my shirt put it in as the conclusion and we would negate then it is blue put that in as the hypothesis 
Um, and obviously, as a real simple example, uh, it would be if the shirt, sorry, if the shirt is not blue, let's say, for example, it is red, then it is not my shirt. It's a very simple concept, uh, very basic logic, right? If if it's my shirt, then it's red, and if it's not, or I'm sorry, if it's my shirt, then it's blue, and if it's not my, if it's not blue, right, it can't be my shirt. They both mean the same thing, and you can, because they're equivalent, we can take advantage of that and replace the implications that we find that are P implies Q with not Q implies not P, and maybe it'll help us, uh, maybe it'll make the problem a lot simpler. Maybe if we have, we assume this, and then try to work our way over here, it'll be way easier than assuming this and trying to work our way over here. Okay, so now let's try one again using our uh, proof by contraposition method. Um, so, again, I don't really need to explain this, I guess, too much, but I'll just draw it in real quickly. We negate the conclusion, make that our hypothesis, negate this hypothesis, and make it our conclusion. And negating uh, the fact that you know, n is an even number, if n is not an even number, then that means that n is an odd number. So now what we have, and what's really nice about this one, is that instead of having the square root and trying to work our way down to a lower, uh, uh, lower exponent, we actually start at n and we want to work our way up to n squared, um, which is infinitely easier. Um, and that's one of the key things that you should really pick up on, and you would you will pick up on if you continue to do practice problems uh, for these types of proofs, is that there's a lot of things that okay, well this one does this one is a is a higher power than this one, I'm going to be dealing with roots, you know, square roots, cube roots, or whatever. Um, I'd much rather square things. So this is an example. You know, this is an example where you can't really do it very simply the other way, and, and this way is going to be all of three lines. So now we have the assumption that n is odd, so n can be written as 2 times an integer plus 1, and if that's the case, um, if we square both sides, then this implies that n squared is equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Um, and lo and behold, this is equal to 2 times 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. And we've very simply shown that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, look at that. It looks really bad, because that's not even close to right. I haven't shown anything. <laughs> I've shown that I'm incapable of doing algebra. Uh, we've shown, it's 2k plus 1 outside, that because this here is an integer, uh, which is just an assumption that I don't need to get into for this, for this video, because this is an integer, uh, this whole thing, right, n squared, is odd. So what we've done here is we've shown that if n is an even integer, or I'm sorry, an odd integer, 2k plus 1, that implies that n squared, let's do it in uh, yellow, rainbow, let's do it in rainbow. Um, oh, come on, that doesn't, it's yellow. All right, well, it, we, what we've done is really, uh, you know, essentially in one line, we have proven this, this thing here that was a monstrosity before. Um, and this is just a great example of why proof by contraposition is very, very useful. Okay, so let's just do another example really quick. Uh, first, it's very clear to note that um, for this question, for any integers a and b, the sum of a and b is greater than 15. Or, I'm sorry, if the sum of a and b is greater than 15, then either a and b is greater than 8. Uh, that looking at the original uh, hypothesis x plus y is greater than or equal to 15, you really, you have nowhere to go. You know, it's, you're lost, and you, know, you don't even, I don't, I, I don't even know where to start from there. Um, 
because anything you do would be trivial. So hey, let's let's see let's see here. Like doesn't look like it's gonna work to do a direct proof. Let's try a proof by contraposition. So we go through and we replace uh, the conclusion, or I'm sorry, the hypothesis with the conclusion negated, and we take this conclusion, we make it the hypothesis and negate it. Um, then we apply De Morgan's law to uh, to this portion right here. And what we are left with is... Okay, so now that we've applied De Morgan's law to the, f the front part here, we have a very, very useful expression. Uh, this, is a, this question is a great example of where you can feel like you're lost, you have nowhere to go, but by using contraposition it makes it incredibly simple, another simple two-line solution. So uh, we're assuming then that not Q of X and not Q of Y. In other words, that X is not greater than or equal to 8, and y is not greater than or equal to 8, which is the same thing as saying, you know, x is less than 8 and y is less than 8, or uh, that x, this is what we're going to assume, that x is less than or equal to 7, and y is less than or equal to 7. And this tells us that x plus y must be less than or equal to 7 plus 7, which is equal to 14. Um, and what we want to prove is the negation of p, which is that x plus y is less than 15. Not that it's less than or equal to 15. And look, it worked out beautifully with 14. So this is clearly less than 15. So by this whole thing, uh, therefore, uh, x, let's make that a little better, x plus y is strictly less than 15 given these initial conditions. And this is just another great example of why the proof by contraposition, uh, contraposition rather, uh, can be so useful because literally I have no idea where to start on this question without it. Okay, um, so here's a sample exercise you should do on your own. Uh, I'm not really sure how to do it uh, at the time I re recorded this, but I'm going to try to you know post one of those uh, post like a link on my YouTube video so that you can click to click uh, and watch the solution. Um, if not, I have faith that you guys can get this, uh, and I really hope that you can. But the one thing that I did want to point out about this. Um, is that, uh, again, you see even and even. You're going to recognize that if you do practice problems, you're going to see patterns in these kind of, in these questions. Um, and I, I really, really, really encourage you, I'm going to discuss it, I guess, a little bit more later. I really encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and do practice problems because it's going to make your life infinitely easier. You're going to be able to see, you know, before you even start and get yourself lost, you're going to say, oh, okay, this, this seems to me like a problem that might, you know, be better with an indirect proof, and maybe you'll, you know, test it out. And, and instead of saying, oh, this is a last resort, you'll recognize that it's a process that actually makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so I think that the most important thing that we were supposed, that, that we should have uh, imparted on you in this, in this module is to take a step back and not just jump right into the to the problem and try to solve it, you know, directly like a direct proof. Or in the case of of this, um, I tend to find a lot of people like to just jump right in to manipulating and replacing implications with ors and and you if you did that with this, I mean, I'm not sure actually how much how how much work it would be because I I didn't do it that way. Um, but the the point of these real quickly is to illustrate that, hey, look at this. I could replace this, you know, very informally. I'm going to say R implies Q. Well, then we would have P implies R, and R implies Q. Impl so we, that's equivalent by hypothetical syllogism to not P implies Q, right? This whole portion on the left of the, this, of the implication here. And on the right side is not P implies Q. So what we're stuck 
we're stuck with, what we're happy to find, rather, is that this is obviously a tautology. And, you know, th there isn't much of a difference between jumping in, trying to manipulate this thing, and realizing it's going to be really, really difficult, than jumping into a direct proof and realizing that that's going to be very, very difficult. Um, and that it's important to be able to take a step back and say, hey, we can replace things with their contrapositive that's going to make life easier on everybody. Um, here in the second example, uh, obviously there's only one implication in this one, so it's not as much thinking. But so this we would say, this is logically equivalent to the negation of this, which would be Q and not Q, sorry, and not Q or R, um, implies the negation of the other one. Uh, the, the hypothesis, rather, um, not, not Q and P. And uh, now, this doesn't really even matter, the, the right side here, uh, because if you notice on the left side, that this part is logically equivalent to Q and not Q and R. And because this thing is always false, because this left portion is always false, then the whole implication is always true. So obviously it's a tautology. So it's another example of, you know, if you jumped in and just tried to go at it directly, you would get yourself into trouble. Whereas if you take a step back and you replace it with a contrapositive, it makes life a lot easier. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, proofs by contraposition, um, indirect proofs in general, uh, are very, very useful if you get stuck doing a direct proof. Um, so if you start to go through a problem, you know, don't say, oh my god, I'm so bad at math, I, I don't see it, I don't see it. Well, maybe you weren't supposed to see it. You know, maybe it is a problem that you can't do directly and you need to use one of these alternative methods. Um, which comes into point two, that practice makes perfect. That the more times you go through and do proofs, the less surprised you'll be when you see things. You're going to recognize that you're going to see lots of power functions. You're going to see lots of even and odd questions. Um, and you'll recognize, oh, I've seen that before. That looks like a proof that's indirect as opposed to a direct proof. Um, and that will also help you alleviate, you know, the stress of saying, of, of trying to figure out where you went wrong. This seems so complicated. No, maybe it's, maybe it's supposed to be, you know, maybe, uh, I'm supposed to try to go about it in a different way now. And that's a very important, you know, thing to be able to, to grasp. Um, and finally, like I've been hammering home the entire time, the contrapositive is logically equivalent. So you can use it anywhere to try to make your life easier. And that's really all that we've done in this whole process, is we've made our lives easier by replacing a statement with an equivalent one and, uh, and utilizing the fact that it may be easier to uh, say not Q implies not P if we have trouble saying that P implies Q. Um, the solution to the exercise is posted in another video. Uh, I have the link right here. Um, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.